making biscuits. Get up in the middle of the noonday biscuits. Get up in the afternoon making biscuits. Get up in the middle of the nighttime biscuits. Get up in the morning time making biscuits. So I have discovered that really the best way I think to clear new ground is to hack stuff down with a machete and then use this grape hoe which can take just about anything down at ground level. It comes in at a different angle than the grub hoe. It does a really nice job just chopping and scraping. We have a lot of very pernicious vines in here that reroot from pieces. They're a, some sort of bindweed member of the Morning Glory family and they are like a nasty perennial. And so all these bits of vines that I'm yanking up here, these a lot of these pieces would just get buried in the bed and they reroot. So what I'm doing is I'm scraping them and I'm burning them because I don't even really want them in my compost pile. So this bed right here is going to be for another tomato trial. You didn't think I would quit, right? I mean, after that last video, it's so sad. I can't grow any tomatoes. Well, I was thinking about the tomatoes in my son's bed that I showed you guys. It came from transplants, and it's a variety that is adapted to the tropics. And I said, you know, I'm gonna put some of those in from transplants and see how they do. You know, before I start my own transplants, because I'm going to do that too. And I talked to a couple of local farmers. It's the best source of information. It's often people not just going on the internet and reading. They find somebody that is actually commercially farming and selling. So I was talking to a couple folks today. And one of them said what he always does is he puts ag lime on the ground before he plants. Both of them actually said to put ag lime in the beds which will help, help get rid of some of the fungal issues apparently. And also, what the second farmer told me is that he puts a little bit of lime or ashes on the ground around each little tomato in order to keep the cutworms from coming at night. They don't like that. So I'm gonna try that. And another thing he said is, don't, don't worry about direct seeding. Uh, just, just do transplants. Make your own transplants or buy transplants and put them in. So, since I happen to, you know, have no patience, I went and I bought some transplants. And then this evening, right now, I'm building a bed. And we're going to plant some transplants in it. So, my three-part method is to go out with the machete and clear the brush, get any obvious rocks and stuff out of the way scrape up as much as I can of the vines, and then I go with a grape hoe and scalp it down to the ground and take all those pernicious vines, as many as I can get, these guys, and throw them in my, my burn, which is not a total waste because I'm going to be using the ashes to feed the gardens. And I'm also burning that tree out right there at the same time, so that's a that's gonna be useful. That's opening the ground up because that thing just keeps growing back and growing back and growing back. And I don't have a chainsaw and that wood is super hard. So my three part thing is first I go out, chop the brush down. Then I come in with the, uh, I just pick up everything that I see. And then I go in with a gray pole and I scrape the ground down. And then I take the broad fork and I go along and I loosen all the ground up, fork it, make my four foot wide or my two foot wide or whatever type of bed I'm making. And then, then I go ahead and shape it. And I often have to come back as I'm going with the machete and get all the, the roots and stuff because there's like all these bits of pieces of roots that are in these beds, see? So I'm always doing this and taking them out as I go along. So uh, what I want to do is get things under control so I can actually hoe the beds nicely to keep the weeds down. Because once the weeds start coming in the tropics, they never, ever stop. 
They want you to die buried under a big pile of green vines. So this bed, now all I'm doing is just kind of knocking the clods up and getting it ready because I'm going to stick my transplants in it. The meadow creature leaves great big clods. It's not like a tiller where it tills everything into fluff. So because it breaks the ground deep down to 14 inches, but it kind of leaves clods. So I smack all the clods to bits. I have a good bit of clay. In Florida, when I had sand, all I had to do was just go through with my hands and like yank stuff out. And just go like this and shake the dirt apart. Didn't really have to whack it as much as I do here. But I'm gonna give these tomatoes good spacing. I'm gonna give them four foot spacing, three foot apart in the rows, uh, four foot, four foot apart. So three by four. I'm about done with this. I think we could start transplanting. Tomatoes, bury them a little deep. Let them root out of their stems. And then I go about roughly four feet down. Do it again. Good luck. We'll see how long it takes these guys to die. You're not gonna die, are you? No, you better not. I'll kill you if you die. Is that four feet? That's about three feet. The next one will be four feet. Doesn't matter, it's not like, you know, tomatoes are gonna get out a measuring tape and then measure and die because they had the wrong spacing. Oh! You just want them to go far enough apart that they don't consume a lot of resources and fight for resources. This one's already really wilty. See, it has almost no roots on it. This is not what you want. Uh, but I have exactly 10, so I'm going to plant it anyways. The, the way it works here is you have a little, you know, you bring in a little box and you go to the place and they give you the transplants and they're not in trays because trays cost money. And so they reuse the trays over and over and over again. And they put some sort of fungicide on them though. I did, I did find that out because here in the tropics, they, they have a hard time producing transplants without fungicides because they get rot issues and stuff and just spontaneously die. So I'm gonna plant that deep and water it right away. But because they use it over and over again, what you end up with is like you go in and the lady pulls them out for you and she's like, what do you want? And you tell, you know, you tell her I want this and this and this and this. And then uh, you have to go and get them like planted that same day or have something that you could put them into like if you have a tray at home you could put them in a tray at home and water them right away but they basically have been yanked out of their cells and are really like okay better go right in the ground right now this is not like cheap plastic world or you can just go to Home Depot and you you end up with piles and piles of extra trays that you've saved behind your shed you're lucky to get them here if there's any trays laying around, some farmer's going to get a hold of them as soon as possible and reuse them until they crumble into their constituent elements. Just one of those things. A little different. can't think of a better way to spend an evening. The only thing better would be if my wife was not behind the camera right now, but she was like snuggling up against me and we were like putting transplants in the ground together. That would be like really, really sweet, but instead she's behind the camera. This one also did not have enough, so we'll soak it really good. You hear that far off squawking? You guys hear that? There's another weird thing. Those are parrots flying over. This time of night, they, they go flying across the sky. Occasionally, they'll invade a starfruit tree and just completely eat all the starfruit. I had the kids chase them out the other day. 
but usually they stay way up in the tops of the tall trees, particularly they like the, the hog plum trees, because they'll go up there and eat the fruit. But it's kind of weird to hear parrots just going, and I always wonder if like a talking one gets out, if it will, you know, teach the other ones to speak. Could happen. Because we're on city water, we have a lot of chlorine in the water, I put it out here in this barrel, and I've also brought up, along with one of my son's help, about 20 gallons of river water, which is way better and has minerals in it, but it's a lot of walking. So I filled this thing up to let the chlorine get out of it, and then we went and got some river water. Pretty soon we'll have mosquitoes, it'll be amazing. But right now it's perfect. So, see, I knew this was the bad one. I knew it! Gonna have to put some silicone in that thing. That's just not gonna work. Kids took my other one. I think I better go find it. So my, my dog, how old are you? Um, five. Five, yeah. That's what I thought. I, I knew that. So my five-year-old daughter lent me hers because somehow my my nice big one has disappeared. So we are going to fill this pink watering can. And we're going to put some evil in it. I have here a small bag of concentrated evil. This is 20-20-20 evil with micronutrients. And we have to make sure we stir the evil in with something. I will take this desiccated chaya stem and stir it in. I want these soluble micronutrients. I'm going to give everything like a little, a little kick right at the beginning. I actually don't have a problem with chemical fertilizers. What I do have a problem with is the long-term use of chemical fertilizers burns the soil out, burns the organic matter out. I think you need to replenish the organic matter if you're going to use that stuff. But for fuller you're feeding, I like evil. I'm out. This is a lot smaller than my, my watering can. So now, we'll make the magic circle around each one of these to ward off the cutworm. Etiam capillus unus habitum bram suam platu gradu lictu Yo studio espanol por dos semestres in la universidad Pontus non capit rurum. Now these are the ones in the other beds, and I'm going to go ahead and take that farmer's advice and just put a ring around each one of them. To guard against cutworms in the night. We'll see. If it rains. <laughs> They have to do it again, and again, and again, until they get big. I'm driving with a top down, baby. Rain won't stop me. I'm high on black coffee, baby. Your blues won't lock me. I'm playing a little seagull, baby. So I'm close, can't stop me. I'm cranking up the bass amp, baby. And you can't drive. Sure.
thanks for joining me. We'll see if these do any better than the other nine beds. Eight beds. It's a lot of beds of tomatoes. But we'll see if this new one does any better. Transplants, variety adapted to the tropics. We'll try it. And we'll see what happens. And of course, I'll let you see the successes and the failures. Thanks for joining me. Be sure to like and subscribe and, and hit the bell when you subscribe and like. And until next time, may your thumbs always be green. Stop!